Our next presenter is going to be Allison Fow, who is a regional dairy educator for Dane, Dodge, Jefferson, Rock, and Walworth counties. Originally from Boca Tuck, Columbia, Allison is passionate about dairy cattle and the dairy production industry. She earned her animal science degree from National University of Columbia, Bogota, and Allison recently completed her master's degree in animal science from the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, with a focus on research in rumen nutrition and my microbiology. Uh, she has worked as a manager, herdsman assistant, and certified breeder in Northern Colorado, training dairy farm employees in healthcare, animal well-being, and on-farm accident prevention. She also has experience with dairy, dairy animal transport, calf care, administration of medicine, artificial insemination of dairy cows and heifers, and overall dairy operation management. So Allison, the show is yours. Today, I'm going to talk about, uh, thank you so much for the presentation, Jackie, sorry. We're going to talk about factors impacting feed efficiency in dairy cattle. As the same, like Dr. Peña Garicaro, like, essential efficient feed conversion, why this is so important. So we know that this is the fraction of feed energy captured in sellable products, but also we know that the cost of feed contributes also. The feed cost constitutes one of the major component of variable costs associated with the dairy industry. Knowing this, the selection of improving the selection for improved feed efficiency is essential for enhanced profitability and in also sustainability in the dairy farms. In addition, we can say that they are gonna be allowing uh, dairy producers to utilize their resources more efficiently. So knowing this, um, by reducing the cost, uh, we're gonna improve feed efficiency and gonna minimize the environment impact, reduce nutrient um, and greenhouse gas emissions per animal and optimize land and resource. So what feed efficient is? So we know that this is the pound of meal produced per pound of dry matter intake consumed. We know that this during uh, is necessary during the time margins and it becomes extremely important in the high influence and low margins. And by increasing the feed efficiency, it results in less nutrients excreted in manure. That this is very important. But how are we gonna calculate the feed efficiency? So we have to use the actual dry matter intake. We have to measure the dry matter of ration components. We have to convert to energy correct meal. And with that, we can calculate the feed efficiency and have the ratio around 1.4 and 1.8. So in this example, uh, we have the energy correct meal equation, so, and we have the feed efficiency. So with this example, we have a high group with 90 pounds of milk, a 3.8% of fat, 3.12% of protein, and also they are consuming 63 pounds of dry mud. So with this information, we use the energy correct meal we're gonna uh, put all the information and we're gonna get for energy correct meal, uh, we're gonna get 92.8. But we're gonna divide these in the pounds or like the pounds consuming of dry matter and we're gonna have 1.47. This is kind of like in the ratio that is the ideal for feed efficiency. But all of these has some impacts, like what can impact this feed efficiency in our dairy cattle. So one of these is very important and is the forage. So forage has the greater effect on feed efficiency since they make um, the, large, the large component and a slow digestion in the diet. Also, they are very critical for maintaining the desired feed efficiency. Other part is the, the variable feed ingredients because they are the most variable feed ingredients in terms of digestibility and also in terms of nutrient composition. Forage digestibility also is directly related with feed efficiency. So as we increase the digestibility, we're gonna increase the feed efficiency. Same correlation or, uh, or is related with uh, the forage quality. So as we increase or we have a very good quality of forage, we're gonna increase intake, increase digestibility, 
and we're going to increase the feed efficiency. Another way that forage can influence the feed efficiency is through the maintenance of a desirable rooming environment. So we know that dairy cows has a great ability to achieve high levels of feed intake relative, uh, related to body size while maintaining a rumen fermentation environment within uh, certain um, physiological limits. So these limits or these characteristics has to be all the time kind of like the same because we should uh, maintain this uh, rumen environment uh, as as we as we can see here, so that way these micro these microorganisms that are in the rumen can work uh, that can work nice can work nicely, and also they can use all the um, all the feed that they are getting. So, what do microbes provide to the animal? So, they detoxify some plants uh, compounds that are toxic for the animals. And also, they get nutrients that they couldn't otherwise obtain from the diet. These nutrients are fermentation acids like acetate, propionate, butyrate, and lactate, microbial protein, that what is the protein that is going, the animal is going to use, and B vitamins. When feeding systems uh, right now is necessary, um, like right now, this, uh, sorry. So right now the feeding is the feeding um the feeding process right now is very important that they are using uh very very th carbohydrates that are uh, rapidly fermentable. So this is one of the problems. Why? Because when you try to feed high levels of rap rapidly digestible carbohydrates, you're gonna like get uh, a low rumen pH, and this also is gonna change the rumen microbial profile. So this is an example. So when we start to use these rapidly fermentable carbohydrates, we're gonna like at the beginning we're gonna do it, we're gonna do good because we're gonna provide the BFAs that is necessary, and we're gonna increase the bacterial growth rate. But we're gonna start to decrease the pH at the point that is gonna be very critical for the animal. So we're gonna get like subacute ruminal acidosis where we just gonna decrease or we're gonna uh, depress the microbial uh, growth and also the enzymatic activity. But the lactate, the lactate production is gonna keep increasing. So getting the rumen more acid. This problem is getting very, very hard. It's, very, it's, it's getting very hard also at the point that the animals can result in death. So other effects that this ruminal acidosis can produce in the animals is Affected efficiency dropping by 0.1 unit by decreasing the fiber digestibility because the, the, the microbes cannot use all the feed that the animal is consuming. Reduce feed intake, lethargy and retrain depression is going to reduce fertility and going to increase uh, the somatic cell count and lead and laminate. This is kind of like what Dr. Uh, Francisco was talking about all of these, the health and the problem, but this is more with the rumen acidosis. So here we have two different, like the difference that when it's a healthy rumen populi, like when uh, when the rumen is a, in a very well desirable, desirable uh, environment, different than when the rumen wall is damaged by acidosis. So how to maintain the rumen environment? What is necessary? So it's necessary an adequate physical, physically effective fiber is adequate uh, the particle length of the region. And as we know, the forage are the major supply of NDF in regions and there is lower fermentation compared with grains or um, and physical characteristics are essential for maintaining the ruminal uh, health. So with all of these, what we're gonna increase is gonna maintain the proper rumen environment by stimulating the chewing, stimulating the rumination, and stimulating the salivation. Increase the, increase the saliva secretion is gonna improve the buffering capacity in the rumen, that that is what we need. Other topic that is very important that can affect the feed efficiency is the fiber level of the diet uh, formulation. 
So as we know, the fermentable carbohydrates, like a neutral deter uh, detergent fiber, they are found in the plant structure. They provide the energy of the animal and they, are negative they have a negative correlation with feed intake. So here is one of the examples that when, um, you, you, when you make an early harvest compared with you have a late harvest. So when early harvest, the cell wall is going to be very thin, concluding that it's going to have low um, NDF and it's going to produce high intake. Different when the cell is very thick, this is going to increase the concentration of NDF and it's going to produce low intake. So saying this, when the percent of NDF in the ration dry matter increase, the feed efficiency is going to decrease from 1.8 to 1.4. In this table here, we have different, uh, different um, body weights of animals, dairy cows and beef cows. And what I want to uh, show you here is uh, by feeding these animals by different concentration of NDF, the animals like the feeding, like the forage dry matter intake is going to decrease. So as it's higher, what I say, the higher uh, NDF is going to decrease the feed efficiency and the animals, is the dry matter is going to be decreased too. We have to pay attention with the stage of lactation. Why? Because after like the dry matter intake after calving can help to determine if the feed, the feed efficiency later in lactation. So when the when it's a low feed efficiency after calving can be a good situation if the dry matter intake is optimal, but can be a bad situation if the dry matter is low, resulting in loss in milk production. When they when it's a high feed efficiency after calving can be a good situation because uh, it's getting like high production of milk, but can be, a, it's a, can be a bad situation if it's a low dry matter intake and also the animal is losing, can be bad if the animal is losing weight, which leads in um, metabolic issues and ketosis and fatty liver. So we have here, what is the dry matter intake per week after calving and fatty? So we have that, we see that after weeks, how the pounds per cow they are getting um they are um increasing. Also, we have to understand that the stage of lactation in early lactation and late lactation, the feed efficiency is different. So um in early lactation, obviously they are losing weight, but they are using this energy that they are uh that they are getting from what they are eating for produced milk. So these animals in this point are very, um, very, very efficient compared with in lake lactation when these animals, uh, they are not, the energy that they are um, having by the feed, they are just using it as a maintenance requirements. So they are gaining weight and they are getting ready for the calving or for the next lactation. So as you can see here in this table, we have first lactation groups in two different uh, uh, times, when it's uh, early lactation and late lactation, and second and, second and more lactations in early lactation and late lactation. And as you can see, during the early lactation, these animals are very efficient. You can see 1.5 1, 1 and 1.7 compared when they are in late lactation, like the feed efficiency is lower. So saying this, the feed efficiency levels can uh, can be different depending on the stable or stable lactation, and also you have to use the days in milk for herd when you try to calculate the feed efficiency. This is the other one of the topics: the body condition score. So when cows, it's kind of like the same situation I was take I was uh, talking before. So cows are gaining body weight. Uh, and they will have lower feed efficiency values as nutrients or these uh, the nutrients are being storage or uh, uh, as a fat. So these cows that they are in early lactation, they are very uh, compromised. They are producing more milk because all the energy that they are using is for milk compared with when they finish, when they are going to mid lactation and late lactation at that point, they are using all this energy for storage or to get, get back all that fat that they use 
and they are just getting ready for the next uh, next lactation and next calving. So the feed efficiency is low. The aggressive feeding behavior, as Dr. Francisco was talking, is also one indicator and can be affect your feed efficiency. So um, one of uh, how you can measure this, this uh, aggressive feeding behavior could be by feeding time, meal duration, meal frequency, feeding rate, and rumination time. So by the higher feed intake is related to low feed efficiency. So whereas, whereas an increase um, in feeding time facilitate the shoeing, reduce feed, par feed particle size, and also increase its digestibility. So in this table, what we have is a study from 2008 so they try to do two different, they try to compare two different groups. One no competitive, that was just one cow per feed bin, and competitive that was two cows per uh, per feed bin. And what they see is like the dry matter intake, they did uh, it didn't change, it didn't have any difference or any uh yeah, any difference come in the same with the older ones. But what they see is the cows that they are in the competition they consume their feed as much greater feeding rate throughout the day, particularly during the periods of pig feeding activity. And also these cows had fewer meals per day, but uh, um, these tended to be longer in length and large in size. So by the end of this, uh, of this paper, they say like, well, the total meal, uh, the total uh, daily meal time it wasn't any uh, significant, so it um, they didn't see any um, differences with the aggressive feeding behavior in these two groups. The somatic cell counts also is very important to um, understand when you're talking about feed efficiency. Why? Because um, as the somatic cell count increase. For example, here in the linear score, when you get it more close to nine, and this is increasing, the predict meal yield or your meal production is gonna be decreasing and the meal year loss I'm gonna increase. So you have to understand uh, that you have to keep your cell counts in like the low, low numbers in the linear score to have a good feed efficiency and also by have meal production. Cow comfort is related to maintenance requirements because the, the, uh, an increase of stress is generally lead to an increase in energy expense for maintenance. So there are many factors that can cause this kind of like a cow stress. One of these is like walking distance. So animals in grazing, um, when they walk around maybe half a mile, the maintenance requirements increase by 1.9 megacalorie, which is equal to five pounds of milk, and also it generates a low feed efficiency. So grazing uh, herds, they may have low feed efficiency. Other factor can be the heat stress. So by exposing animals or like dairy cows at uh, very high temperatures can, can reduce the feed efficiency uh, around one, 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 units. But exists an evidence that when you feed um, feed additives like yeast, unoporous, uh, direct feed microbials for these lactating cows, when they are in heat stress, you can increase the feed efficiency by 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 points. However, um, the gains are usually less than uh, could be achieved by improving the forage quality. The last one that I'm gonna talk is the feed weight back. So it is recommended for fresh cows in this case to have uh, the highest amount of refusal. Why? Because you know that the, they are in a critical metabolic state and they need to eat more and also because they are producing more milk. So you have to give them um, a very good amount of refusals. Different, but in high groups and low groups that you can be more flexible about the amount of refusal. And the ideal, when you see like the whole, uh, the whole picture, 
the ideal is has around 1% of the refusal. Um, so because you don't want to run in, um, you don't want to run in with less refusal or have too much because you obviously you don't want to waste money. And the easy way to uh, try to know like this kind of like a refusal is just pay attention how much the animals are eating each day. So how you can be done with refusal? So the way that you can use it is repurpose because you obviously you don't want to uh, waste money. You don't want like a um, like throw away this because this is part of uh, your expenses. So what you can do, you can repurpose, but you have to understand is that you cannot repurpose if this refusal has any uh, like any condition, like if it's a steamy, it's woody, it's a slimy, hot, it smells weird, like things like that. You have to understand that you cannot give it this to your honey. The other point is like you don't have, you cannot feed your fresh animals or your prefetched animals with these refusals. Why? Because you know that this, these animals are in, um, meta, in a, a critical metabolic um, stage and they really need a very good uh, quality of, of feed. And also you have to know the nutritional values of the refusal. So in that way, you can determine where is the where this feed can be used again. So normally, um, is uh, this feed is going to the lake lactation animals because these animals, uh, they can eat and they can, they are not producing enough, uh, like big amounts of milk, but they are using all of that for getting ready for the next lactation. So for taking home notes, um, first, obviously the feed efficiency reflect the level of fat correct meal yield produced per unit of dry matter consumed with an optimal range of 1.4 to 1.9 pounds of meal per pound of dry matter. It is important to know the feed efficiency of your cows so that way you can inform decisions for production and manage the income per cow, the income per cow. The feed efficiency measure by group can be also give you an idea if your herd is on track for maximizing production over feed intake. Different factors like days in milk, age, growth, changes in body condition, all of these factors that we were talking before can affect or can impact your feed efficiency values. And also several approaches can be used in the field to measure or estimate the feed efficiency in groups, herds, and feeding management change. Uh, with all of these, I uh, just wanna say thank you so much for this opportunity. And if you have any questions, I can respond to this question. Thank you, Allison. And we do have a question. If high quality forage increases intake, doesn't that potentially go against increasing feed efficiency unless the cows milk more? Yeah, that is a very good question. If high quality forage increase intake, doesn't that potentially go again? Yes, but also like they have like they because it's a high quality of forage, they don't they well yeah they increase the intake, but also they are not eating too much because all of this high quality forage is giving the animal all what they they need. So they don't have to eat more and eat and eat and eat to get all the uh, energy that they need. So uh, I don't know if I'm responding that question. Like, doesn't go against because as the way that you're eating very good quality of forage, you are eating less, but you are eating, you are increasing your feed efficiency. 